In the middle of the night, a gecko stares intently at the Longan lanternfly. What is it coveting? Is it a standoff between predator and prey? In our minds, nature is all about organisms being caught in ruthless arms races of competition, predation, and parasitism. However, some species have evolved to coexist harmoniously. One or both players are benefited from the interaction. Sometimes they become so interdependent that if one species perishes, so will another. The Longan lanternfly is a species of plant hopper. These insects have a piercing mouth part that can penetrate tree bark to suck sap from the plant's vascular bundle. As its name suggests, the Longan lanternflies gravitate to Longan trees. But they are not the only visitors. Eyeing the abdomen of the lanternfly, the geckos seem to be plotting something. Both stump-toed geckos and bullring's geckos have arrived at the scene. As the lanternfly feeds on the tree sap, it excretes excess sugar as a liquid honeydew. Remarkably, the geckos have learned of this delicacy. This sugary excretion is what amassed the geckos. They catch the honeydew with their mouths, then lick it clean. This free lunch provides energy for the geckos and costs them nothing. So they are more than willing to wait behind the lanternfly. The geckos gain fitness benefits from this interaction while it has neutral effects on the lanternflies. In ecology, this phenomenon is termed commensalism. Organisms that excrete honeydew often establish symbiotic relationships with others. In the same order as lanternflies, aphids also feed on plant sap and discharge sugary liquids. Aphids breed rapidly. A few individuals can explode in number with suitable conditions. This living food bank has attracted the attention of some giants the polyrachis dives ants. Like herding and milking dairy cows, the ants harvest honeydew from aphids while protecting them from predators.
both species have benefited from this relationship. It is hence called mutualism. Besides aphids, some Lycaenid butterflies have also evolved an intimate bond with ants, especially during the larval stage. The caterpillar of the common grass blue feed on creeping wood sorrel. A few acrobat ants tend the caterpillar loyally. Delectable and defenseless, caterpillars are vulnerable to predation. Under natural selection and genetic serendipity, the Lycaenid caterpillar has built a symbiotic relationship with ants. Just like aphids, the caterpillar exudes honeydew to garden the ants. It even evolved myrmecophilus organs, two retractable antennae that emit pheromones to entice them. As time goes by, although the caterpillar has already pupated, the ants guard it tirelessly. Research suggests that the honeydew from the Lycaenid caterpillar induces a drug-like addiction from ants. The caterpillar acquires perpetual protection while the ants are manipulated. Despite the sweet treat, their relationship may very well be exploitative. Interspecies interactions can be convoluted and obscure but for many species, their fates are tied by millennia of coevolution. Without each other, they will die. Lichens are a symbiotic association of fungi and algae, or cyanobacteria. In the ocean, corals rely on zooxanthellae algae to flourish. Mutualism can bridge species of vastly different groups. A stray brown cow grazes leisurely on the slope. While relaxing, life is not without nuisance. at most annoyance. But larger horseflies bring real detriment to the cow. To reproduce, horseflies rely on mammal blood for protein. The stray cow pays the painful price. It feebly shoes them off with its tail and ears, often to no avail. love dwelling with cows. First of all, cows disturb and turn up insects as they tread the pasture, allowing egrets to pick the insects with ease. More importantly, a cow is an insect magnet on its own. Flies are tiny and tasteless. Horse flies are far juicier.
Cattle egrets secure food while reducing pests that harm the brown cow. This is why they love partnering up. Symbiosis is indispensable to the survival and reproduction of plants. Albeit immobile, plants have evolved unique structures and tactics to persist in nature. Orchids are one of the most species-rich taxa in the plant kingdom. Epiphytic orchids, such as the Claesostoma bee orchid, cling to trees. Their roots anchor onto the branches but do not penetrate nor injure them. This makes their relationship commensalism. The Eulophia carrion orchid will only emerge during the flowering season. For the rest of the year, it has no flowers, leaves, or chlorophyll. Its pseudobulb stem is well hidden in the soil. Without photosynthesis, how does it obtain nutrients? This species is a saprophytic orchid. These orchids establish mutualism with soil mycorrhizal fungi. As the fungus digests soil hummus, the orchid absorbs the resulting nutrients and minerals. Meanwhile, the orchid requites the fungus with water and sugar. Orchids exhibit exuberantly diverse morphologies. Most species reproduce by flowering. Under the selection pressure of recruiting pollinators, the flowers of orchids have evolved into thousands of shapes and sizes. The red-clawed habanaria has a distinct labellum petal, fiery orange and resembling the silhouette of a man. It is also named the red man orchid. Hiding its nectar at the bottom of its elongated spur, the orchid patiently awaits its matchmaker. This damselfly has a pollinium stuck on its legs, but obviously uncomfortable, it tries to remove it. Failing to transfer the pollen, the damselfly is not the ideal pollination partner. The red Helen butterfly is foraging for nectar. Richly colored flowers are particularly inviting. The red clawed habanaria stands in the rock crevice near the stream. Like a cold flame in the wood, the striking petals allure the red Helen butterfly. The red Helen fully extends its siphoning mouth part and pushes its head towards the stamen. The position is just right to access the nectar. Meanwhile, the pollinia have stuck near its siphon. Unaware and unbothered, it keeps on visiting other orchids. has come into contact with the stigma. And so, the pollination is complete. In this mutualistic interaction, both the butterfly and the orchids benefit. The delicate design of the spur has evolved in a way that it is slightly longer than the butterfly's siphon, so that the pollination can actually come to fruition.
Pollination is the key to reproduction in flowering plants. Some plants rely on the wind for this task. Some plants, like the red clawed habanaria, muster insects. But insects are not the only pollinators. The red cotton tree is a companion of Hong Kong's neighborhood. In early spring, red cotton trees stand tall and mighty. Their flowers burst into full bloom. The prodigious flowers are enriched with sugary nectar. As animals shuttle through the flowers, pollen from the anther is transferred to the stigma. When successfully pollinated, the flowers will drop and bear fruit. The seeds sit in tufts of fiber, ready to ride on the wind. While wind brings the seeds of the red cotton tree afar, some plants cooperate with insects to spread their seeds. In the heat of summer, the incense tree is profuse with fruits. As the obovoid fruits ripen, they start splitting into two halves. This gives us a glimpse of the seeds. Each fruit bears one to two seeds. They feature a delicate design. When the fruit is open, a silky thread holds the seeds in the air. Dangling in the air, it awaits to be brought far away from the mother tree. A naughty paper wasp has arrived. Each seed of the incense tree has an ileosome, a fleshy structure rich in lipids and proteins. The wasp has consumed the entire ileosome, yet the seed is still attached to the fruit. The naughty paper wasp has failed the mission. The fruits split one by one. Normally, hornets prey on other insects. The ileosome of the incense tree seed sends a chemical signal that mimics the prey of hornets.
The lesser banded hornet wants to bring the food back to the colony to feed the larvae. And so it gnaws the thread until it is severed. The yellow-legged hornet joins in. Hugging the seed tight as it flies away, the hornet processes the food on its way back to the nest. It only takes away the ileosome, discarding the intact seed to the ground. A study in Guangdong discovered that, on average, hornets can disperse the seeds at an 80-meter distance. Incense tree lever the help of hornets to spread their seeds and increase the range, while the hornets earn the ileosome on the seed. This intricate mutualistic relationship once helped incense trees proliferate in Hong Kong. Due to the economic value of incense wood, humans have widely cultivated incense trees. As incense trees can be used to produce precious, fragrant resin, Hong Kong's agarwood trade prospered during the Song Dynasty. The aroma of agarwood pervades the harbor that trades it. And so, we are named Hong Kong, the Fragrant Harbor. It was the incense tree that gave this city her name. It was the duet between the incense tree and hornets that unfolded this emblem. <laughs>